Uh, good afternoon. Um, you, you have been obviously listening because this has been an open meeting, so you're, I'm not going to reframe or, or uh, uh, the paraphrase what has been said by the different delegations. Um, let me summarize it with, uh, or summarize at least my own uh, message based on what we heard with uh, seven points. Point number one, stakes are high, no doubt. After the recent development, stakes are high. Point number two, this is time for clear thinking and a diplomatic surge, not a military surge, and cooperation. Um, if there was one common point among all speakers, in spite of obvious differences, was the urgency for supporting a political process. None of the participants was in doubt on that. Point number three, we don't need to reinvent the wheel here. We have a framework, the goal is clear, it's 2254, it is political transition, there is a political package to work on, there are four baskets, nothing of that is in doubt. So if anyone is ready for a political process, learning from what has been happening in the last few days and wanting to de-escalate, the package is ready. Point number four, what is happening while we are talking in Moscow at the moment, at this very moment, in the discussion between the United States and the Russian federations is very important. What we were doing here was, in fact, constantly being aware of the importance of what is currently, while we are talking, taking place in Moscow. Point number five, there are new echelons, new moments. One is the meeting in Tehran, which is going to take place regarding relaunching the ceasefire, which is urgently needed, and the Astana meeting. And then, following that, we are ready to relaunch the intra-Syrian talks in order to make sure that there is at least a serious attempt to have a ceasefire. And that could be in May. I will not indicate today a date because we want to frankly maintain the pressure for the Astana delivery on that because ceasefire would make a big difference for the perception of positive intra-Syrian talks. So the priorities are restoring the ceasefire, humanitarian access, and relaunching the Geneva talks, and uh, diplomatic surge. That's the main point. Yes, yes, one moment, when, one per time, please. And uh, one per time, please. Thank you. Special envoy, I will give the floor, don't worry, they are time. Go ahead, <laughs> Thank you, Madame. it's Pamela Falk from CBS News. Uh, the ambassador of Syria just said that Syria does not have any chemical weapons, that it was confirmed by the Jim and Sigrid Kog. Can you refute that? Well, I can only say that was some time ago. Now everyone has been asking for a the investigation, and there are UN um, capacities for doing so. We should give the chance to OPCW and the Jim to do actually what they should be doing. Um, I give the floor to this gentleman, then I'll come back. I'll come back. Don't worry. Um, yes, sir. Prima di tutto, un apparente in italiano, complimenti ancora. Lei resta la speranza per il popolo siriano. Grazie. Then, I want to ask you this. All the 15 praised you. There, there is something that this council had today in common. Only good words for the work of the Mistura. Mm -hmm. So, the Mistura, I guess, cannot give up because there were always this word, maybe he's tired, maybe he doesn't want to do it anymore. So you are not go going to give up, but for what you saw today, that we saw certain um, phrases change between the Russian deputy ambassador uh, against the British ambassador, this has looked even worse than their Cold War. What advice you can give to who really want to help Syria and the peace process, who really want to help you? Well, I think to uh, stick to what they said, and all of them said it. They are uh, uh, going and they intend to, one, stick to the fact that there is, in spite of sometimes the feeling that there is a military solution, that there is only a political solution. 
and two, to support, therefore, the political process, and which is represented by the Secretary General and myself. So to apply what they say, and, uh, and I think that would be good enough. Thank you. Um, I will give now the floor to the gentleman, then back then. Okay, go Thank ahead. Thank you, Sorry. Mr. Demistura. Uh, my name is Ali Barada from Francis Van Catter and Al Nahar newspaper. Uh, in fact, my question is about your meetings yesterday in Washington. Mm. I uh, understood that you met with uh, Mr. McMaster and others. Uh, would be appreciative if you could tell us what was the atmosphere. Second, how confident are you about the guarantors of Asatana uh, process that they're helping uh, bring peace in Syria rather than escalating the situation? Thank you. Thank you. Well, uh, yesterday I was in Washington. I had meetings at the National Security Council. I even had the opportunity for a short meeting with uh, the uh, Secretary Mattis. Um, my main contribution is to show and explain to the Americans, as I've done to the Russians and to everyone else, frankly, that there is a political way out. There is a credible political process and that um, one can build on that. I will not elaborate on more details and on the discussions. Regarding Astana, uh, two very important men, President Putin and President Erdogan, uh, just after the 29th of December, announced a ceasefire. And they committed themselves to uh, make all what they can to make sure that that ceasefire works. And it did work during the period of January, even a good part of February. It's time for that commitment to be renewed because they do have the guarantors, to which now Iran has joined, the capacity of influencing this. I will now give the floor to the lady and then to you, if I may. Will the U.S. be attending the meetings in Tehran, Astana, and Geneva? Did they make a commitment at all? <laughs> you should ask them. Oh, you uh, yeah, uh, well, <laughs> you, you should ask them. No, no, you should ask them, frankly. They didn't give they, you any response? Well, uh, no. We have been, uh, the, you know, the U.S. is already an observer in Astana. You know that. And they've been uh, uh, the present uh, as an observer in Astana already since the first meeting, which established the process of Astana. So it's up to their decision now on whether they want to upgrade it or keep it at an observer level. So I would not comment on and that. Geneva? Are they committed to Geneva? Are they they are. They are. Very much. Of course. No, no. But uh, don't forget, in Geneva, the discussions are not among US, Russia, Iran, Saudi Arabia, it is among Syrians, with then observers and supporters from those countries in the background, and they would be there. Yes, you have been patient. Thank you very much. This is Majid Gilli, Ruda Media Network. It's good to see you again here. Um, so, Dr. Sir, I want, uh, in your remarks to Security Council, you talked about the impact of the U.S. strike last week. Uh, can you tell us about uh, uh, the political and the military impact of after the strike? Politically in Geneva, did you see any change from the position of opposition and government after the U.S. strikes against the Syrian forces? And on the military, on the ground, how that strike uh, increased the, uh, the intensification of conflict there? Thank you very much. I would just uh, uh, limit myself to the comment I just made. The recent developments, both the chemical attack and the, the recent uh, U.S. military strike, have been a reminder and, in my opinion, a uh, stimulator for uh, the feeling that there is an urge, a real urge, for a diplomatic surge. That's all I can say at this stage. Sorry, the gentleman there who has been patient more than you. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Uh, Matthew no. Lee, Inner City Press. Yes. The, right after the strike, you were, your, your office put out a statement saying you were operationally focused on it. I was yes. wondering, specifically, can you, like, when did you learn about it and what did you do in response to it? And also, in, here in the U.S., there's a lot of focus on different statements by the administration about uh, Assad not staying or not being legitimate. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to know, when you see those, is, do you believe it's through your process that, that, that the things they're discussing will be carried out, or is there some separate process they're referring to by which Assad would no longer remain in power? 
I frankly can't answer the second point. What I can say is what I hear. And I, what I hear from the Americans, but also from anyone else, that uh, the solution for the future of the Syrian political environment is through negotiation and according to Resolution 2254 and through a UN-led negotiation. All the rest I am not in a position of commenting, frankly. I learned about it uh, at, um, um, not when it happened, later. And uh, my first reaction was, how can we now uh, manage uh, the crisis and avoid that it becomes an escalation? That has been my first thought, and that's normally what the UN should be doing. Um, yes. Uh, and, uh, as you know, this building is full of rumors. Yes. How long are you going to stay in this role? And <laughs> <laughs> this has become, but why is it such an, uh, well, and, uh, you see, uh, there's been a long rumor on that uh, for the last three years, actually. So <laughs> the because uh, is always an issue. No, uh, the, my main consideration was very personal, frankly. I am a human being like all of you, and uh, I have a family, and the family has been extremely um, uh, impatient about the fact that there is no time for them at all in, with this type of mission. But uh, I must say the Secretary General has been very generous in understanding that. At the same time, I have to tell you that uh, these photos of the children affected by the chemical attack were, uh, had an impact on my family. And when we discussed it, they felt, and I, I was proud of that, look, Stefan, you, you have a job to do. Family comes after in this case. And that, I think, helped me in making my own uh, recommendation to the Secretary General, and the Secretary General has been kind enough to take that into account. Um, you have a point. Uh, yes, um, as you know, a resolution, uh, a draft resolution is gonna be put up for vote this afternoon. Um, there are indications Russia is gonna veto mm. it, but uh, at least in the text that has already appeared, um, it appears that the, uh, resolution uh, just focuses on condemnation of the attack and calls for steps, detailed steps, to enable a thorough independent mm -hmm. investigation. On that premise, do you have any uh, opinion on, on uh, the merits of this resolution, this draft mm -hmm. resolution? Thank you. Short answer, no. Thank you. No, I really would not. I think I will only give the last floor, forgive me, sir, to Madame, but then is the last question. Thank yes. you. I've Sorry, yeah. Evelyn Leopold. Uh, good to see you again. Sorry? I said good to see you again. Thank you, same here. Right, um, I know the vision is for one unified Syria. Uh, do you see perhaps the country splitting into different regions in order to stop the fighting? Uh, not different countries, but different regions. I when I was myself um, involved in Iraq and then later in Afghanistan, there was a moment when the, the debate became uh, quite active about uh, uh, dividing the country or acknowledging a division de facto of the country in three, four areas because it appeared to be a simple solution. And um, luckily it didn't happen, but there was a strong debate about that. I hear sometimes this option coming up on uh, Syria, but uh, as you heard also today, one Syria a, um, with its own unity is crucial. Um, Daesh has already been able sometimes uh, to show that they have been trying to divide not only Syria but Iraq in various portions. So the aim remains and should remain one Syria. Now, de facto, there can be moments like the ones we are seeing at the moment in which there are areas which are beyond the control of one Syria or under the control or influence of others. But the ultimate aim is one Syria. Yeah, one Syria. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you.